name is Arthur Rahimov and in this video I'm going to discuss uh, topics related to qualities of optimum or ideal we take a course or teaching or the question related to how to teach a full or real Buteka method and uh, this topic kind of present in many videos which I recently posted but there are two recent events which took place just like two three days ago when this topic also was like uh, discussed in a way not directly but it actually i understand uh, completely relates to this topic first of all uh, on our facebook uh, forum for practitioners for buteka practitioners we have like more than 400 people there uh, one practitioner asked that i got a, a student a patient or client with lung cancer stage four so it's like late metastasis metastasis and other body organs and doctor say it's three month life expectancy. Uh, what should I do about that? So it's like people, of course, provided different suggestions what to do. And I thought, of course, like one of the optimum or ideal ways would be just to get trained as a real Buteka practitioner so that you can handle, even though the original Buteka method, which was developed in Russia, uh, did not uh, uh, say or did not suggest, or even they would say that stage 4 cancer is not possible to treat, people just can have more peaceful death uh, with application of the traditional or classical Buteka method, but now we know, and if you again saw my videos on cancer, interview with Misha Sakharov and so on, then you would realize that actually it's possible to deal with stages 3 and 4 and very successfully with the Buteka method plus certain other modifications which we can also include in the Buteyko method. So it's kind of difficult to topic, uh, quite complex topic as well, of course, like to treat one of the most complex conditions. But going back to, again, how, how to teach the real or full Buteyko method. So that was one event which kind of made me think about, like, okay, that's the topic. And then at the same, on the same day, like, again, it was again, like, three days ago, I got an email from a medical doctor. The subject line of email was medical doctor in France. <laughs> so the medical doctor in France who specializing in uh, critical care, actually, anesthesia and critical care. So it's like, like talking about, like, emergency care, or intensive care units, like different names are used in different countries, professionals. And in this email she wrote to me, but I'm convinced that there is not only one method. That's why I contact you. I would like to use my legitimacy as an MD to work and let the breath work known here. What could be done if I want to specialize in this field? Actually, it's a very smart and like very amazing and clear thinking of this doctor from France who is asking about like how can I get like maximum like uh, efficiency of the technique and how can I apply it and what should I do to specialize in this field. So you can see here that again like it's kind of the topic uh, relates to the same topic but before answering this kind of uh, query or topic uh, question I would like to go a little bit in history because actually if we look back like starting from 1960s when Dr. Buteyko started to teach first medical doctors in Russia and I already kind of partially covered this uh, uh, in other videos, quality of teaching also changed every decade quite significantly and I mean qualities of teaching provided by Dr. Buteyko himself and therefore the question is actually extremely complex. And uh, therefore, like late, uh, some like even probably two, three years ago, but in previous video, I already mentioned that, that actually it's impossible to define the, what is actually the original or classical or traditional Buteyko method developed by Dr. Buteyko and taught by Dr. Buteyko himself, because it was different in time. And uh, what we can also see, like it's kind of uh, interesting and very important, of course, topic as well, that uh, in Russia what happens, I believe that the highest quality of teaching and highest quality of teachers which doc whom Dr. Buteyko trained uh, what, uh, uh, was present, uh, highest quality of teaching was present uh, probably in 1960s, 70s, maybe 80s partially. Why? Because at this time it was common for Dr. Buteyko and many Russian, old Russian sources would mention this fact that he actually was saying that actually a practitioner should have a control pause of 60 seconds in the morning to achieve a standard of health which corresponds to normal health, so which, which we again discussed in the past many, many times. 
And th that is a very hard goal to achieve, as we know, because if, if we consider modern practitioners, uh, I, I don't know much about Russia. I like, follow a little bit some forums and some people. But uh, I know that on the West, it's definitely less than 1% of all Buteyka practitioners have the norm uh, <laughs> developed by Dr. Buteyka, like normal health. And, uh, but, uh, what happens in Russia during later decades, since the method uh, was applied mostly for asthmatics and became popular for asthma, and there is like Ministry of Health approvals and so on, and clinical trials, and on the West, similar scenario was followed like from 1990s, 2000, and later years, it became more known for asthma, and therefore, kind of quality of teaching uh, was dramatically reduced. Why? Because the goal of the method, as it became again starting from 1990s, for asthma was, let's say, just to reduce medication. Like if we can reduce medication, like as it was done in uh, clinical trials 10 times, or even like in some trials up to 20, 50 times. That's uh, an amazing result, of course, if we apply it on a mass scale, and it's relatively easy application of the method. But at the same time, it's also kind of allowed uh, to train practitioners who would not be able to again like let's say deal with cancer and other really serious health conditions on the one hand and themselves would not have the same uh, standards of health because like to apply a method for us my practitioner i believe myself that actually a practitioner with health level four somewhere around like 30 seconds morning cp six hours of sleep would be quite successful dealing with asthmatics would have very high success rate and be very effective with them and uh, that was uh, definitely a factor why uh, Buteyka method, how it was taught and how practitioners were trained in Russia and later how it started to spread in the Western world, were changed dramatically in terms of dilution of the method. Dilu dil dil diluting of the method took place again due to this factor in particular, but I believe there is also another factor which kind of relates to the fact that actually achieving again good health, normal health and especially state of Super health is an extremely challenging task because it requires from a person, a student, to actually invest a lot of time on breathing and physical exercises. So it's very difficult and it makes sense because like you see this uh, health method of breathing retraining and Buteyka method, they, uh, it, it is able to solve virtually any health problem provided that the student is able to retrain his or her breath. So you, you can see that this is actually extremely powerful health strategy. And to my current knowledge, this is briefing retraining is the only therapy that works always for all type of health conditions and for all type of people, regardless of gender, age, can be young, can be very old, race, people of different races, nationalities, and so on and so forth. It works always and regarding also for uh, uh, type of uh, health condition people have. So therefore it's kind of very wide uh, therapy briefing retaining and this is extremely powerful as a result because it allows again to treat virtually any health condition for virtually any person. And therefore it makes sense that it actually should be <laughs> extremely difficult because should it be easy everybody be, would be doing that. So it's extremely complex, extremely challenging uh, goal of the person to change the briefing pattern. So, uh, and therefore it like, makes sense that on the West, uh, Buteyka method became so weak that now we actually have practitioners. Uh, it's actually, maybe, maybe this part is not so obvious, but this year I discovered that there are Buteyka practitioners trained by Buteyka Clinic International who do not know how to measure the CP test correctly. So I like spoke with one practitioner, like was watching video of this practitioner, and I noticed that actually the instruction which was provided for the test was very different from what uh, you can find on uh, my YouTube channel. And I wrote emails and asking like, okay, what is done and what is the UCP test, how you do it, and what what are your results? And the person was claiming that CP was 30 seconds and uh, the correct CP was about 17, 18 seconds, so nearly twice less. Sleep was somewhere around seven hours and physical exercise was like somewhere around half an hour, like really small amount, half an hour, maybe one, some days one hour a day. 
as was really a quite a little exercise and by parameters like for a uh, quite young person was clear that it's actually impossible to have health level four with these parameters real health was actually below health level three even and that was clear, uh, like, because of that, I kind of tried to convince, but I, I knew from my past, like, from already from probably like 15 years ago, when I already had students who were getting courses first from other practitioners and they were then learning from me, I realized that actually when they get like these basics inside their head, like, including how to measure the CP test and many, many other details. It's very, very difficult to change them. So once we train in a certain way, it's easier to teach, like, I don't know, maybe let's say 10 new students rather than to retrain one person who already gets some basics and have like strong beliefs related to his teacher or her teacher and uh, theory and philosophy of the technique. And therefore, like, uh, I, for me, like, uh, yeah, like, I realized, like, okay, it I, I would be not possible to, <laughs> to, to convince this person that actually the CP test that was done was totally incorrect. And uh, so that relates to uh, kind of uh, the state of affairs that we have right now. And going back to the question itself, like, with all these introductions that I provided, what would be qualities of teaching or of courses? Uh, of practitioner training of a person if this person uh, wants to kind of uh, to, to, to know what is like what is real what they committed and how is again medical doctor from France uh, working in uh, critical care ask me about what could be done to specialize and why there are so many different methods I would say that what is really important in the course uh, again in the classes training by a teacher, trainer, practitioner, explain uh, key discoveries of Dr. Buteyk, I believe, would be, of course, very important. And that's why one of the previous videos that I made, I think this year, like several months ago, related to two main discoveries of Dr. Buteyk. And why I believe so? Because I believe, again, these are totally different discoveries. One discovery relates to, and that was patented in Russia uh, by the Buteyk Table of Health Zones, where Dr. Buteyk claimed in his patent application that there is normal health and there are five zones with positive health and seven zones with negative health uh, related to again briefing automatic uh, parameters of automatic unconscious briefing of the person at rest. So that was one discovery. Why? Because this discovery actually, uh, first of all, is totally physiology related. It really does not say like, okay, we now live in the age where people use computers, people have cars and physical exercises are popular, uncommon, people may do like half an hour, maybe few people may have 60 minutes in average, of course I'm talking about. So it's not so common for people to have a lot of physical exercise, lifestyle is totally different from what we had, let's say, 200 years ago and all our previous history. And therefore, kind of, it's, it's kind of difficult to achieve uh, normal health. Uh, that makes sense, but that's again like only relates to our current place of our again current civilization, our culture in, in, uh, in relation to like uh, humans, but it does not relate to physiology. And so what this method discovered that again, physical diseases or again, uh, diseases of civilization, so-called chronic diseases, they are not possible when people have again normal breathing or they have even state of super endurance or super health. So that was a statement uh, of this discovery, again, first discovery, which again does not actually say even that people are able to change their breath. You see this uh, table, it does not claim that somebody like has certain level of health and he or she can make, make it different. It does not say that. It says that actually you get this briefing pattern, automatic unconscious briefing parameters. We can test, as Dr. Buteyko claimed, how much medication you need, what type of symptoms you are going to experience with diseases. If you have blood pressure, what would be parameters and so on and so forth. You see, here again, there is no statement, there is no way how you change your briefing pattern or your unconscious automatic brief. And therefore, this is kind of completely physiology related. So it's kind of... Uh, does not take into account like uh, if you're able to change it again or not. You see, it's just a statement. You have these briefing parameters, you are going to have this type of symptoms, probably you would require this medication and that would be your factors related to like quality of sleep, your mental clarity and so on and so forth. 
That's one discovery. And totally different discovery relates to, okay, there is also a way, a method, how you can retrain or change your briefing pattern. So that's called Buteka method. That would be like uh, more appropriate to say that the method is actually the way. And Dr. Buteka clearly stated in his 1968 lecture at the Moscow State University that Yogi, for example, could do it very differently. As he, again, in this lecture said, uh, that Yogi could breathe through only one nostril, think upside down on the head <laughs> and do some briefing exercises. So he was, of course, very metaphor metaphorical, tell telling simply that could be, there could be some exotic ways how people change their breath, okay? retrain their breath. But immediately after this sentence, in, in this lecture, he clearly stated that actually it's not important the way how you change your breath, it's important where you arrive as a result of your practice. So that was a very clear statement saying that actually the result is more important than the way. And that means actually <laughs> that second part is the Buteka method. It's something which you already viewed in 1968 as something which could be probably changed, could be modified, could be improved, providing that the result would be better. That was key part of a statement which he again made in this paragraph talking about again yoga, comparing that with briefing retraining. So therefore, I believe here that a good course should provide actually details about these key discoveries of Dr. Buteyko. So again, how briefing parameters relate to health of people and provide also the technique itself, how it's possible to retrain the breath. Good practitioners will be also, of course, able to predict for a student how long would it take to achieve certain parameters because once uh, the age of the person health conditions, symptoms, medication, history, when all these parameters are known, it's possible to say approximately. And, and also, of course, it should be known how much is, uh, this student is able to invest in his breath work, physical exercise, and it's possible to predict how long time would it take for the student and if it's possible at all with these particular techniques to uh, save maybe the life of the person sometimes or help this person because some people may get stuck, some people students unfortunately, unfortunately may die. So th that also happens as well. So, but again, the qualities of the good practitioners, experienced practitioner would be the ability to predict these parameters. Now, uh, as well, the practitioner should be able to say to the student how much investments of time in terms of physical exercise and breathing exercise especially, plus of course lifestyle factors too because some of them are may be like not so pleasant for modern civilization because again, Buteyka method like use, um, for example, cold shower in the way similar to maybe Wim Hof, you know, <laughs> it's quite challenging, quite tough. Uh, physical exercise, as I mentioned, hard beds, and uh, there are few details and sometimes diet, of course, dietary changes are absolutely necessary. And that makes it again like kind of a, a, a thing which relates to several different factors, but knowing these factors again, a good uh, experienced practitioner should be able to predict the future for this particular student. So that's uh, one, para, uh, one of the factors. And here I can mention also asthma, which we already discussed. Why? Uh, because you see, even when teaching asthmatics, a practitioner should be able to do that, meaning that a practitioner should be able to explain to a person with asthma what are the uh, possible ways or alternatives or results in terms of treatment of asthma? And uh, we know that uh, there could be four, but probably up to five, six different levels or stages of asthma treatment, not just clinical remission. There are some other stages related to like genetics, passing genes to children, but it's possible to again, to differentiate different levels and I believe like if a teacher even teaches like let's say only asthmatic to specializes like on, on relatively easy conditions, even in this situation it is uh, I believe important and extremely useful for students in long term for them to know that there are actually specific uh, levels of treatment of asthma and what would be specific requirements in order to achieve these levels. So. Uh, and the, including, of course, having cleansing reaction, having normal, normal lung function tests, 
like no signs of asthma and so on. So when we have like a good teacher, this teacher should be able to provide this information so that a student actually can objectively see his or her perspectives on health recovery. Now, the alternative to this approach when the student has a clear vision of goals and seeing what are the clear requirements in order to achieve these goals is to say, oh, like something uh, that is to say something that this practitioner, for example, achieved. So imagine like there is a practitioner, uh, there are again now hundreds and hundreds of Western practitioners who teach asthmatics only and their health level somewhere probably around health level 3, even below health level 4, so like let's say 20, 25 seconds morning CP. And that is great for reduction of medication and asthma and elimination of main symptoms of asthma. But to explain that actually you can have further stages of asthma, I, I'm not sure actually if they would do that. It's a kind of, I don't have experience with knowing exact details how the method is taught uh, in the Western world. Uh, I just knew few practitioners. But my, uh, my kind of uh, uh, vision of the problem would be that it's really possible that many teachers probably would avoid these uh, really key factors and details even related to, again to asthma treatment. Why? Because you see if they themselves never experienced, that's I believe the key problem, they never experienced normal health and even, even health level 5, 40 seconds morning CP, six, uh, 4 hours, 5 hours of sleep, uh, a lot of energy and kind of what does it uh, take to arrive there, it would be very difficult for them to target these students and even to explain and to mention that these zones of health and these levels of treatment of asthma actually do exist. Why? Because if this practitioner did not get it himself or herself, it's uh, actually quite a big psychological challenge. I know that from other areas like from I'm, by my education, I worked as a teacher for many years in high school teaching calculus, algebra, so I have like teaching experience and I've been a coach, a trainer for also for many, many years for several elite uh, athletes. And so what happens that uh, I know that actually very few coaches or trainers are able to teach their students so that they're able to get level higher than this coach or trainer or teacher has himself or herself. It's a, it's a psych, quite, quite kind of a hard psychological challenge for them. And that was the reason why a long, long time ago, probably one of the best, but in, in my view, best in terms of writing, Dr. Sulagin from Siberia, he had totally fascinating articles, I believe, like the best, uh, kind of most poetic and most clear and precise uh, articles about the Buteyka method was written by Dr. Sulagin, not by Dr. Buteyka. But it's like absolutely amazing, especially if you read it in Russian, it's like, like poetry. So he wrote that actually it is noticed that when practitioners have like quite poor health level themselves, we have strong tendency to teach these students only to the level that we achieved. And that makes total sense from what I already discussed. And that actually goes back to the question, to the original question, how we can uh, encourage, how we can get like practitioners, get trained as a, a full, a real, complete like boutique practitioner who is able to deal like with variety of health problems and apply variety of tools, more probably tools than average Western students get in their courses uh, related to even like let's say asthma treatment. So therefore, like, it's a, it's a huge topic by themselves. And if you actually look in previous videos that I posted on channels during this year, like I have maybe one, two videos in a month, you can see that actually all these videos were kind of revolving around the same topic, to have good quality of teaching and to have clarity so that our students can get better health and can know what exactly it takes to achieve this health.